Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I am going to show you the build that I am going to take into the DLC. I will address the most important aspects of this combo and I will explain in detail why I decided to use this one instead of any other build. Once we have learned every feature of the build, I will test it against the toughest enemies of the game and I will make a quick guide on how you can defeat Radan and Mog easily so you don't have any trouble to access the DLC. And at the end of this video, I will be announcing who are the winners of the DLC giveaway. So please, get comfortable, grab something to eat and enjoy the rest of the video. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, let's begin with the weapons I'm going to use on this build. First of all, the main weapon of this build is going to be the Naga Kiban Plus 25 with the double slash Ash of War on the King Affinity. The main reason why I decided to use a cat katana as the main weapon of my build is because I find the katanas very balanced in three main aspects the speed of the attacks, the, the damage of each attack and of course the stance damage of the heavy attacks. I will say that this is one of the most important aspects why I decided to go with a katana. The insane stance damage the katanas do is really really useful especially because the heavy attacks of the katanas are quite fast and why I decided to choose the nagakiba instead of the uchi katana I mostly did it for the range and because I love how it looks. There is no other reason you can use the uchi katana or you can use any other katana you prefer as long as you can infuse it that is very important as well. This katana on the king affinity will scale A with dexterity so that will allow me to use a good level of dexterity and infuse the weapon with other uh, type of damage so I will be able to, to deal multiple damage types without the need of changing the affinity of my weapon. Okay maybe you don't know this but I am a big fan of Sekiro. I love that game, I almost no hated that game but it's a little bit complicated but I enjoy it a lot and it's because of the katanas, because of the fast paced combat so yeah katanas are my favorite weapon type and that's why I decided to use the Nagakiba as my main weapon. My second weapon will be the Bolt of Gransax. This is the best weapon to use in range scenarios. The projectile goes so fast that most enemies are not able to dodge it. Even Malenia is not capable of dodging the projectiles most of the times. And of course it looks amazing guys. It's one of the best cool looking weapons. I'd say that with the bosses, uh, playing at close range is better. But with some in, uh, terrain enemies like, uh, I don't know, like regular enemies that are uh, luring around any place. It will be better to use a range option because you will not engage uh, against a group of enemies or any trap that the game might be setting up for you. The skill of the weapon Ancient Lightning Spear will scale only with dexterity. Despite of being a skill that deals only lightning damage, it will not scale with fate at all. It will scale with dexterity. So the higher levels of dexterity we have will benefit our King Nagakiba, the weapon art of the Bolt of Grand Sax, and that will take me to the third weapon of this list which is the Bloodhound Fang. Okay guys, I have multiple reasons why I chose the Blood Bloodhound's Fang as one of the main weapons of this build. The Bloodhound's Fang is a unique weapon that is upgraded with somber smithing stones and most of these type of weapons are unique and they are not infusible with any Ash of War. In this case this weapon is not infusible with any Ash of War as well but it can be buffed with the spells and greases. This will add a lot of versatility with this weapon. We can buff it with lightning. We can buff it with Bloodplane Blade which is another important factor of this build that we'll address later. And we can buff it with Black Plane Blade. So it's a very, very versatile option. And it will allow you to go crazy with the fantastic skill it has. A very safe uh, skill of one unique weapon. Because you have multiple iframes when performing the skill. And of course it has that versatility of playing with multiple elements. I really love how the Bloodhound's Fang looks with lining on it. Maybe some enemies will be weak to lining. And we will have that lining part. And before explaining why I decided to go with these buffs for this build. We will check out a very good alternative for a weapon of this build. If you don't like any of these three weapons. And that weapon will be the Guardian Sword Spear on plus 25 with the Ice. Spear Ash of War with the King Affinity. I will not have this one equipped because I don't like the moveset so much but it's really nice. I have this feeling that one of the bosses of this new DLC is going to be weak to Frostbite. So I want to have a weapon capable of building up Frostbite in case we face some enemies that will be weak to that status effect. With this combo we are dealing lightning damage and building up Frostbite at the same time which is crazy. And of course you can you can buff it with Black Flame, Black Flame Blade or with Blood Flame Blade if you want to use the main moveset of the weapon which is very good as well. Also, this weapon has a unique R1 moveset which is very decent, it's quite fast to the 
high AR we have with this weapon because of our build? Well, first of all, we have Vigor on 40. For me, this is going to be a decent value of Vigor. I was thinking on going on with 50 on Vigor, but I actually think that that's too much for me. I was testing the, the game on UN Plus 7, taking some hits, picking some of the most powerful attacks on some enemies, and to me, it was more than enough to have 40 Vigor. I will be using Mind on 25 to be able to use my spells, which I will talk about it in just a few seconds, and of course, to be able to use the Ashes of War of my main weapons. We don't need that much Mind because this is a build based on melee combat and we have ranged options as an alternative resource for certain scenarios but the build in general is craft to fight at close range and of course we need a lot of endurance a few days ago i uploaded a build called Kenshin OP build or Kenshin Warrior or something like that. It was a Nagakiba build. It was my best Nagakiba build because the main target of that build was trying to outperform the reverse of blood with a Nagakiba with Blood Flame Blade. In this case, the build is pretty similar. I'd say that the stats are pretty much the same with the main difference that we are not going to be using 40 on endurance. We are going to be using only 35 on endurance. Is more than enough. It's a very decent value and it's going to give me enough stamina to fight aggressively. And we are going to be using a minimum of 20 points on strength. This is mostly to be able to use the Bolt of Grandsax and I really wanted to have the Bolt of Grandsax on this build. Now the most important stat of this build is going to be Dexterity. 80 points on Dexterity exactly. It, it says 85 because I have equipped the Millicent's Prosthesis but it's 80 on Dexterity. If you pay attention to the AR of our weapons, in our Nagakiba we have 668 as AR dude. That is a lot for a Katana because the Katanas are so fast and we are not using our buffs yet dude. It's a lot of damage for a Katana. Bolt of Grandsax we have 784 as AR of this weapon and in the guardian sword speed we have 871 as AR of our weapon these values of AR are normal for strength weapons that are heavy that are slow but that are strong but in this case we have a uh, ridiculous AR values for weapons that are fast which will allow us to deal a, a ridiculous amount of dps with a lot of other benefits like a good range having 80 on dexterity and having these ars with fast weapons is so crazy but here in fate is where we have the most important part of this build with these high values of fate we can do multiple things that are quite useful. We can use Golden Vow and Halop Shaberi as our main buffs as always because we will have a lot of more faith than they require. Our main weapon buffs in this case are going to be Bikes Dragon Bolt, Blood Flame Blade and Black Flames Blade. These three weapon buffs will scale directly with Fate. Uh, many people is confused about Blood Flame Blade. They don't know that the damage increases significantly with the Fate values you use. If you use the correct seal, and I will address that a little bit further into this video, with these high values of Fate, we will have a lot of benefits from, from these three main weapon buffs. Now, why I am saying that Bikes Dragon Ball is a weapon buff? So what I am going to do in most cases is that I am going to use Golden Bow first, then bikes Dragon Ball and I will replace the body part of this buff with Hall of Shabriri but I will keep the weapon buff and it will look amazing you can use Electrify Armament as well but the red lining looks way better than the yellow one and of course with these high values of faith we are going to be able to use as much incantations as you wish but I will only use the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, a perfect incantation to deal tons of damage in huge targets. And of course, we need a minimum of 10 points on Arcane to be able to use Blood Flame Blade. Now, as I always tell you in most of my videos, you can use any seal you have available. But if you want to get the most out of Blood Flame Blade and from Black Flame Blade, then I recommend you to use the God Slayer seal on plus 25. That will be really helpful for those specific buffs. And if you want to increase the damage of Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike, then I recommend you to use the Graven Stall seal. With this seal, you will increase the damage of the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike by 15% and with its good fate scaling you will have a lot of lightning damage when using Bikes Dragon Ball or Electrify Armament. So in terms of weapons your build should look like this, King Nagakiba, Bolt of Grand Sacks, Bloodhounds Fang, Ghost Slayer Seal and Gravel Stone Seal. And of course my favorite armor set of this game is the running set with the beautiful Iron Casa. It's really decent in terms of uh, physical damage negation and elemental negations as well. It's not perfect, of course, but it looks amazing and it's decent. That's why I chose this one. But feel free to use any armor set you prefer. Now, speaking about talismans, the best talismans you can use if you are going to use Blood Flame Blade or Black Flame as above, those are going to be Ritual Sword Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Millicent's Prosthesis, and Lord of Blood's Exultation. The same applies for the Physic Flask. 
for those buffs, the Thorny Crackteer and the Flame Shouting Crackteer are going to be your best options. Now let me show you the best combo if you want to use the Bolt of Grand Sacks with Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. In that case, the best talismans you can use are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Lightning Scorpion Charm, the Flux Canvas Talisman and the Gothry Icon. This specific combo is perfect for Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. If you don't want to use Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike and you want to use only the Ancient Lightning Spear of Bolt of Grand Sacks, then just replace the Flux Canvas Talisman with the Shard of Alexander. And this specific Talisman combo is going to be the best for the Bolt of Grand Sacks. And in the Physic tier, your best options are going to be Lightning Shrouding Crack tier and Fate Knot Crystal tier. And of course, this build is going to consume a lot of stamina with almost any weapon we use, so it's going to be very good to have our Pickle Torten X ready. So yeah, guys, that is mostly our build explained in every detail we can explain that. So now let's test it a little bit, and then we will announce who are the winners of the DLC giveaway. Okay, guys, now I will show you how to quickly defeat Radan without any trouble. And the first thing you need to know about this boss fight is that as soon as you enter this portal, you need to start uh, riding your horse backwards. So as soon as we press yes on this thing, you will try to do that. So right now I am trying to uh, ride my horse backwards. And this will allow me to quickly go at this point and avoiding the first part of Radan's boss fight. In order to explain the, the, the fight as much as possible, I will not use the, the, the buffs. So the thing that I will do here first is try to bait his uh, most important attacks. You can previously buff. You can buff. I am not going to do it to show you the... This, once you bait this attack, you can get some free hits quickly and you can attack uh, as much as you wish without risking your character. And here you just have to go sideways because he's going to do that uh, stuff that he likes to do and attack him as much as is possible. And here, be careful because he's going to do that attack. And here you can keep attacking. And be careful there. I'm, I'm an idiot, but that doesn't have to happen to you if you stay in a good position. Now, as you can see, without any buff, I almost destroyed this guy before the second phase. Now, right backwards against the, the projectile. And you will be fine here. Now, he's gonna jump. I'm pretty sure about it. Nice. But if you stay behind, you will be good. And just keep attacking uh, until he's gone. And yeah, that's basically what you can do with Radan. It's very easy. He's not a problematic boss. Now I will show you how easy you can defeat Mog with this build without having to struggle a lot with this guy. But you need the Mog Shackle. This item is located at the bottom of the lane their source guarded by two giant lobsters. How this thing works, it will chain Mog to the ground as long as you do it in the right moment. The right moment to do this is at the start of the fight if we have a very very strong build. And that's what we have today so let's do it that way we are in new game plus and the most important thing i have to tell you here these two bosses radan and Mog are optional bosses which means that you can complete the game without beating these two guys and save them for the very very last moment when you already have the sacred relic sword to be able to farm the the albinarix in the Mogwin palace so you will be able to farm enough runes to have your level 200 build and craft this build just for for this moment specifically and to be able to enter the dlc as strong as possible so first i will use golden vow now i will enter the arena and I will use Blood Flame Blade. I will use uh, my Physic. And I will use Hall of Shabriri. I will refill my FP. And I will use the Mock Shackle. Here is perfect. We dodge this and we use it immediately. And we start attacking like crazy. Just manage your stamina and you will be good. Look at this damage, guys. It's the half of his HP in New Game Plus. Imagine what it can do. In oh my god. Oh my god, dude, this is so easy, bro. This is actually a very decent build, and that guy has an 80% of fire damage absorption. So even if Mesmer, which is going to be, I guess it's going to be the main boss of the DLC, if that guy is resistant to fire, it won't matter as long as we learn his moveset and we use this build. Now let's quickly defeat Malenia with this uh, build. This is so simple, guys. So we dodge the first attack, and we start attacking like crazy. And we have to keep close to Malenia. She's not going to do anything to us as long as we keep attacking. This is perfect. That's fantastic, guys. Now we are into the second phase. And we wait for this specific moment when the sword is at the top of his head. We start attacking. And we go crazy with this build. And this is going to be amazing, guys. It's quite easy, as you see. We will not have any trouble as long as we keep attacking her. 
that that's perfect dude it was a no hit yeah guys it was a no hit it was an easy no hit with this build in new game plus is imagine what we can do in the first playthrough so now guys is the moment of announcing the winner of the two dlc copies bro let's go wait a little bit i will bring the materials i need right now okay guys now is the moment of announcing the winners of the dlc copies i will give away two dlc copies to the winners of this uh, giveaway <laughs> If you did the steps properly, steps that I explained with details at the end of that video, which plenty of you guys didn't do, and I also explained it in a in a pinned comment. I, I am not even considering if you if you if you sent the screenshot or not. If you didn't manage to send the screenshot, I also counted you here. So you you only have to contact my girlfriend and send your info. That's all you have to do after all, dude. Because I was like, yeah, uh, maybe the screenshot was not a great idea because everyone is struggling with that. But please send your info, dude. How am I going to contact you or how am I, how am I going to announce you if you're not sending anything? Some of you guys only send hi. What, dude? But yeah, for the guys that actually sent their info, that actually like that video and that are subscribed to my channel, you have the chance right now of winning the uh, the a copy of the DLC. We have a lot of papers here. There, there are a lot. They are just small. But we have a lot of guys here that have the chance of winning a copy of the DLC for Steam. So let's go, let's go, guys. Let's see who is going to win. So in order to do this about luck, I will blind my eyes with this, uh, with this st stuff. Now I can't see nothing, so I will pick a paper randomly. I will shake it a little bit for you, so let me just let me cover it properly. Okay, now it is properly covered, and I will start shaking this thing. So it's completely random, guys. It's like Malenia in the first phase. Completely random, nothing about it. And now, I hope you can see it. Let's choose the first winner. Let's choose the first winner. I have one paper on my hand. Okay, I have one paper only on my hand. Here we have this paper only on my hand. I have only one here. And I will and I will grab another one with my other hand. Okay, guys. And we have let me see, let me see. And we have another one here. We have the two winners in my hand. There is no code in this video. There is no code in this specific moment. And let's see who are the winners. I have one here on my left hand and one no in my right hand and one on my left hand, dude. So let's see the first one. Okay, only two papers of every papers. They are smashed right now. So let's see, guys. And the first one is going to be Rafael Kaluya. Let's go, baby. Here you have, guys. Rafael. Oh, let me let me put it closer. Rafael Kaluya is the first winner, guys. Nice. Now let's check the second one. The second one is going to be er Erpiskello Official. Erpiskello Official. Okay. So. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous, guys. So here is Erpiskello official. We have all winners, and as soon as long as soon as you are watching this on YouTube, you are you have to be being contacted by me, and I will and I will and I will give you your copy of the DLC, bro. So congratulations for uh, for the winners, and thank to all of you guys who participated. As you saw, it was completely random. I have no power on anything. I just wrote the names. I made a a, a bottle with this uh, with your names, and I picked one randomly with my eyes blinded. So what else you can do? It's about the log. It's the destiny, guys. So in the future I will do another one, but right now we have two winners and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I will see you in the next one.